with the hottest team in the West. The Anaheim Angels top first. Brad Radke off the 15-day disabled list. Taryn Erstad just crushes one. Try to find the ball. Upper deck. Solo shot. Erstad's fourth of the year. Radke would leave the game after facing one more batter. Re-aggravated that groin. Bottom of the eighth. Angels up 6-5. Base is jammed for Christian Guzman. Finds a little turf in left. Dustin Moore scores. A.J. Przinsky hesitates for some reason, yeah. and he's out. <laughs> Run. Tied at six. Top nine. Tim Salmon pops it up. Nobody has any idea where this ball is, but Eddie Gardano has spotted it and lays out. It hit the speaker. Great catch by Gardano. Bottom nine. Troy Percival on. Two outs. Two on. Corey Koski. You get. We go to extra innings. Bottom ten. Runners on the corners now. Darren Erstad moved from center field to first. Gets a new glove. Much discussion about that. And so the Angels play five infielders to try to prevent the winning run from scoring. Nobody out. Lou Podon. Denny Hawking and hits it right to Erstad. New first baseman makes the put out. Works beautifully. Next batter. Same infield configuration. Guzman back at the plate. Hits it to left field, and it's the little used sacrifice fly sports center highlight. Deep enough to score the game winner, and the Twins take it. Seven to six. Gardano pitches two scoreless innings for the win, but the Twin pen is wiped out. 17 and a third innings they go over the last two games. Radke, by the way, was going to be limited to five innings. Lasted just 12 pitches, re-aggravated the groin, and was sent right back to the disabled list. Lou Pinella, the Mariners, visiting the Orioles. The M's took two of three in Seattle last week. Top second, bases loaded. Ichiro off. Scott Erickson. Here comes Desi Relliford. The Mariners up 2 nothing. Bottom six. Mariners up 4-1. to one. Brian Roberts off Rafael Soriano. Mike Cameron with a tasty backhanded snag. That is magnificent work. In the same inning, Jeff Conine comes up with a man on, and Cameron cannot get this one. Cannot do a Terrence Long number. That was a sick grab by Oakland, but this is a different game. Conai's third home run in the last two games. Orioles closed the gap to four to three. Top nine tied at four. Jeff Cirillo with a man on off Jorge Julio. Desi Relliford trots on in to score again. And the Mariners go on to win this one five to four. Cirillo taking care of business. Former Oriole Arthur Rhodes gets the win. Seattle's pen allows a run for the first time in 12 games. Ichiro continues to be a nemesis of the Orioles with a knock. He's a career 420 hitter against the O's. Mariners, meanwhile, 18 and five against Baltimore since 2000. Now, Seth Greisinger for Detroit, he, he could have pitched against Cleveland or gone to see Tenacious D. Either way, he was going to have his socks rocked off. That's Chris Magruder. He starts the party. 405 feet worth of home run. It's Magruder's first. 2-1 Cleveland. Four batters later, Ellis Burks. Two men on, Burks. Through the raindrops, 371 feet of three-run tater. Burks eighth, 5-1 Cleveland. Greisinger says... That's a home run. Yeah, the answer, yes, and so is this. Jim Tomei. I am William Wallace. Out to the land of the lost. And watch the arrow. It nearly is going to end up in the trash can out there. Tomei's 12th. Let's get on the horn and see if somebody can come in that will stop giving up home runs. Unfortunately, they called Jose Lima. Oh, bye. Tomei does it again, 463 feet away, his second of the game, the 20th time in his career he's done that. 937 feet just for Tomei, 10-6 Cleveland. Ellis Burks, 442 feet, get off me ball! It's his second, the 20th time he has done that. Five homers for the Indians, a season high, 2,155 feet worth. Whew. First time in more than two years that two Indian players had two homers in the same game. Meanwhile, out this weekend in Tampa, first to four Thursday. Bottom first, Tim Hudson versus Ben Grieve. Yeah, whatever. Hudson gets Grieve. Look at bottom six. Hudson against Grieve one more time. Advantage. Grieve turns on this one, turns the scoreless game into a one nothing Devil Ray lead. Grieve's only hit in six at bats on the night, seventh homer of the season. Bottom nine, runner on second, three two A's. Greg Vaughn against Billy Koch. Single through the box. Felix Escalona coming around from second, and he will score it. D-Race tie the game at three. So, bottom tenth, bases loaded, one out. Bring on the arrows. Lots of arrows in this program. Eric Chavez in between Miguel Tejada and new third baseman Olmedo Signs. Why? 
because the A's brought in left fielder Adam Pyatt to play first base for signs had been. It's an AL West thing. Apparently. Exactly. The Angels did it so effectively. The long and short of this, we now have five A's infielders, which works to perfection. Greg Vaughn, broken bat, Chavez, Tejada, the 5-6 double play. A's get out of the inning. Bottom 13th, runner on second. There's Vaughn at the dish one more time, and that bat is not broken. Off the wall, Russ Johnson will trot in to score, and the Devil Rays win it by a count of 4-3. Season high three hits for Vaughn, who entered the game two for his last 26 over an eight-game stretch. Tim Hudson dodged 11 hits in six-plus innings to allow just one run. Bonds in the first. You know he's coming. Bonds straight up into the air. hits this about this seven miles play. into the stratosphere, but it's in, in the playing field. The Quentin McCracken makes the catch. We're scoreless in the top of the fourth. Luis Gonzalez wants to visit SpongeBob SquarePants. That means we're going to get wet. Only three opposing players have ever hit a ball into McCovey Cove. Gonzalez becomes the first man to do it twice on his 11th home run. Jose Guillen lines the ball to center in the top of the fourth. And Sean Dunstan, the veteran. He's played all over the place. Great arm, great glove there. Bottom four, Bond second at bat this time. Helling sits him down looking only the 15th time Bonds has struck out all year. Helling says, I'm not overpowering. I can't blow fastballs by folks. I have to rely on control. Bottom seven, shift on for Bonds, but he goes the other way. It's all right. Gonzalez has got time to get there. Bonds 0 for 3 at this point. Bottom nine, Bonds on deck. Runner on second. Nobody out. David Bell to Craig Council. Throws to first for the out. Tom Goodwin tries to hustle over to third. Mark Grace gets to Tony Womack, the unique 5-3-6. Seldom seen DP. For the D-backs, two outs for Bonds. Byung Young Kim wants nothing to do with him. He walks him. That's the 63rd base on balls of the year. Jeff Kent now two out. Kim, outside corner. That's it and that's all. Kent, not happy. A Bob Marley special. One love. Of Helling's sparkling effort, Bob Brenly said he knew it was a big game for us to split the series and then get out of town. He made his pitches. San Francisco got only four hits, two each from Benito Santiago and Ramon Martinez. Kirk Reeder pitched very well but loses for the fifth time in his last six starts versus Arizona. Expos and the Braves, Michael Barrett. Born in Atlanta, still lives in Alpharetta. Shot to right field. Darren Bragg goes into the wall hard. Fernando Tatis would score one nothing. Expos, Barrett. He has a triple. Let's watch the replay. Now, Bragg almost made a great grab to save the game on Wednesday night, diving in towards the infield. Here he dives out towards the wall and look out. And actually, the wall has a little damage. Bragg was all right. Easy for me to say. Paul Pavano facing Bragg. Bragg gets even with the baseball gods. Brings it Vinny Castilla. Braves lead two to one. Top six, same score. Jason Marquis facing Lee Stevens. And Marquis, he says, when you're 100%, you're always a little better than when you're not. Makes sense. Sort of a Yogi Berra kind of a thing. Jason Marquis won three of four starts since coming off the DL. He also had a hit and scored a run and is batting 286. Atlanta has won 10 of 14 and moved a half a game ahead of the Idle Mets. Getaway day for the Reds in South Florida. And Jason LaRue more than happy to see Miami in his rear view mirror. You know, some people go down there, they party too much, spend too much money in South Beach. Other people suffer sunburn. LaRue. Suffering a serious case of the whiffs. 0 for 4 with four strikeouts on Wednesday. Didn't get much better Thursday. LaRue's first at bat, Kevin Olson, and the hook will bring you back. That's five straight strikeouts for LaRue. Bottom third, Luis Castillo hits a dribble. And look at Todd Walker making the play. Todd Walker. Great play. Watch it again. Walker charging all the way. Knows he has to do it in one motion and gets his man at first. Back to LaRue, top of the fifth. Olson, no, sir. His average dropped 17 points over the last two games. That's six straight strikeouts. Top seven, Reds up 2-0, and that's good contact. Eric Owens giving chase, and you can chase all you like, but it's not coming back. Third of the season for Larkin. Next batter, yep, it's Jason LaRue. And that's in the dirt, and he's swinging at it anyway. At least he gets to run this time. He's still out. That's seven straight strikeouts in a row. Uh-oh. Top nine. Uh -oh. Reds up 4-1. LaRue up for his fourth at bat. No. Well, ladies and gentlemen, hey. Jason LaRue has made contact. It's a fair ball. Jason, just remember, you could be that guy. 0 for 4 on the day, and we take baby steps here. Jimmy Haynes wins consecutive starts for the first time since last May as the Reds move to 11 games over 500. Baylor hoping to see the offense get going, talking to Mark Bellhorn, who would help him out. No score, two on. Alex Gonzalez, who would later homer, lines this one 
off the right field wall. And Todd Hundley is on the way home. And Hundley is called safe by Matt Hallowell. Jason Kendall, I tagged him. I really did. And bang, bang play. Maybe he nicked him. Lloyd McClendon comes out, picks up the argument from there. To no avail, Cubs lead 1-0. Top three, bases loaded. Remember Mark Bellhorn talking to the skipper? He said, Skip, I got it. I got a grand slam, the first ever of his career. His fifth home run, Cubs lead 6-2, bottom nine. Pirates down 9-8. Alphonse Sick is 2-1 pitch. is called a strike. Kendall has a beef. Next pitch, he grounds out to Antonio Alphonse Kendall has more to say to Matt Hallowell as he goes to the dugout, and this time he says, you can keep on going right on down the gate and go sit and start eating. And, and Kendall's cussing. And then Lloyd McClendon is clapping. And then he, too, gets to go early. It's all over. Kerry Wood, now 4-1 and one on the road and 1-3 and three against Pittsburgh. Jimmy Anderson, now 3-1 and one against the Cubs. Mark Bellhorn, who hit that grand slam, said, I haven't played in five or six days. I was just happy to start and contribute. Brian Giles for the Pirates, 12-game hitting streak, during which he is batting 500. Rockies, Padres, one play, and why would you need more when you have Greg Norton at the plate with the bases loaded in a scoreless game, and you're so not catching that. Norton has 10 hits on the year. Two of them are grand slams. Fourth of the season. Rockies now 22-10 and 10 under Clint Hurdle.